Hello and welcome. Please pause this video, read the problem, and try right, it so let's read this on problem. your own together. They want us to graph the function, um, the following function, on the set of axes below. So um, here they wrote, I'm going to write it out myself. I usually write these things out as I read them. That helps me think about them. So f of x is our output, and it equals two different things, depending on what the inputs are. So it equals the absolute value of x, if what? If x is larger than or equal to negative 3 and less than 1, or it equals 4 when x is larger than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to 8. So I'll say that again, it's the absolute value of x when x is larger than or equal to negative 3, but less than 1. And the output f of x equals 4 when your inputs, your x's, are between and including 1 through 8. Outside of that range is not defined. Now this type of a function, a function that has different definitions based on the inputs, based on the x's, or as you call domain, uh, is called piecewise. This is a piecewise function, so you can look up more about that by typing that in to search for it. Notice the spelling piece, not as in like, not war, but piece, but as in pieces of something, because each piece of this function behaves differently. Let's deal with the second part. Um, this might seem a little bizarre, this second part right here, but it's really nice and straightforward. It's basically saying that no matter what x you plug in between 1 and 8, the output is 4 no matter what. So on our graph, if we look at our graph, x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all, all of these points. If you plug in 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, 6, 7 or 8, your output is 4. So the height's always 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means the first point, oops, the first point would be 1, 4. An input of 1 leads to an output of 4. So it's a point, 1, 4. 2, right, has an output of 4. So it's 2, 4, and 3, 4, and 4, 4, and so forth. All of these points and everything between um, has a height of 4 because that's where it's defined. Our function is not defined outside of that range, so I'm not going to deal with points beyond the domain 1 through 8. Now the other part is a little bit trickier. Um, but we can break it down and, and think about it. It's saying that f of x equals the absolute value of x when we're going from negative 3 up until, but not including, 1 on our domain. So the absolute value of x, uh, we'll talk about the general shape of it first. In general, absolute value functions, if you have a y and an x-axis, if I said just graph the absolute value of x, if I said graph that, you would get something like this, a nice symmetrical V shape, right? That would be the absolute value of X. Then if I said, well, can you graph Y equals um, negative X? And here it would be consistent with my color coding, the negative absolute value of X, excuse me. Well, that would be the same thing, but upside down, right? It's a reflection. And then other variations of the absolute value, um, I'll use blue, if I take y equals the absolute value of x and then add something to it, so let's say plus 2, that just shifts my graph up, right, here. And then likewise if I subtract, it shifts it back down. And then if I start multiplying um, by different numbers, right, if it's not just x, but let's say 2x or something, um, the steepness of the graph will increase. So let's say we have, let's do red this time y equals the absolute value of 2x. Right here, we're going to have the same shape of a graph as a v, but it's going to be twice as steep. So maybe instead of looking like this v right here, it's going to be something like this, much steeper. All right, so this is just general things to think about as you're graphing absolute value. Um, now, you might forget all of that. It's normal to forget all of these things. So you have to recreate graphs, and, and often, we're given graphs you don't recognize. So don't be scared if you don't recognize a graph. Instead, think, how can I set this up on a table to make sense of it? What can I do? Well, here, we know that our domain, our x values, are going from negative 3 to 1. So to really get a sense of this thing, I'm going to pick all the integers, which are positive or negative whole numbers, from 0 up to, but not including 1. I'll plug in 1 just to see where it's going, but I'll remind myself that I'm not including 1 by drawing this dashed line right here. So if we plug in negative 3 to the absolute value of x, um, oops, what did I write here? f of x does not equal 0. I don't know why I wrote that. Oh boy. f of x equals the absolute value of x. So if I plug in negative 3 for x, 
What's the absolute value of negative three? Well, absolute value is distance from zero, so it's just three. In fact, the next one, the absolute value of negative two is just two. The absolute value of negative one is just one, and the absolute value of zero is zero. And the absolute value of one would be one. So this, this point right here, I'm not gonna include, but right, I'm not gonna include this. That tells me where the graph is heading so I can draw it out. So here on my graph, I'm going to use those values as points. Negative 3, 3, we can graph that as negative 1, 2, 3, right? We plugged in negative 3, and the output was 3, so that's this point up here, negative 3, 3. Every input and output can be thought of as a point on the graph. Negative 2, 2 is next, then negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and we would include 1, 1 right here, but I want to make it a hollow point because we're not going to actually include it. And now I could plot all of the points in between, or I could just draw a line right following this trend right here. So again, this hollow point tells us that the absolute value right function, this piece here, as x approaches 1, right, as it gets infinitely close to 1, we keep using the absolute value of x, but then when we reach run 1, we stop using it. Instead, we hop through this hollow point, right, if the input of x is 1, we go through the hollow point and up here to 4. So this is our piecewise function. It's a pretty cool one. And remember, if you're ever given a piecewise function that you're having a hard time analyzing and you don't recognize it, make a table. Set it up and think about it point by point. Thanks.